Why, oh why, would you ever put an external breather kit on your Harley Davidson? Catch you inside. Revelator Elf. Hello, welcome to Revelator Elf. Hope you enjoy the channel and the series of videos. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share and check out the website revelatoralf.com. So uh, here I'm talking about the external breather kits uh, that you can get uh, for your Harley Davidson, whether it's an M8 uh, or any other uh, engine uh, that you had, sportsers, uh, diners, whatever, twin cams, whatever. Now, what I'm going to do is get over to the bike and uh, talk a little bit about it there. I'm going to quickly talk about the external breather kits that you can buy, let's say one of the most uh, notable here, DK Customs, where you can uh, take off the uh, air filter housing, let's say. There are two breather bolts that come out of the, the heads of the, uh, the cylinders, and then they've got a rubber hose that actually feeds back into the inlet to the throttle body. Basically, what's happening is that the uh, any pressure buildup uh, in the cylinders or, or in the head in the engine that is actually released, and a little bit of oil can actually be vented back uh, into the throttle body, and then back into the combustion chamber. They've done this for emissions, uh, essentially, and to make a cleaner running engine, and also to solve this uh, pressure issue or pressure buildup. Now what you can do is get a kit which replaces those formed rubber hoses from those uh, hollowed out uh, vent uh, nuts, those vent bolts, and you can have uh, two new uh, rubber hoses that actually come uh, behind the, uh, the housing here, down here, and then you can have a, a T-junction let's say, then another bit of tubing uh, which will then connect to uh, a collector bottle or a catch can, which many would say. Now you can also have uh, connected to it uh, an inline filter something like that or you can just have it uh, dangling at the bottom of the engine and have it drip on the floor if you so wish right let's get into the workshop and I'm going to talk about this in detail and uh, the merits of having it and not having it okay so what is the benefit of having the external breather kit well instead of a uh, warm or hot air with some kind of oil residue being uh, vented into the throttle body and then into the combustion chamber what you're doing is actually taking that away and allowing just fresh air colder air or as cold as possible to go through your air filter your air cleaner and then into the throttle body and into the combustion chamber basically uh, colder air cleaner air means uh, more bang for your buck so why are Harley Davidson uh, doing this? Why are they venting pressurized air and oil uh, mixture, if you will, uh, from the engine back into the uh, throttle body and into the cylinders? Well, basically, this is a problem that needed to be solved. They had pressure buildup. They needed to vent it out. They need to show to be compliant with uh, emissions, uh, you know, the environmental impact and all that kind of stuff. And they said, well, actually, we can burn this uh, back uh, into the combustion chamber and and, you know a problem solved now many people are making a big thing about this saying well actually it's uh, causing a lot of carbon build up on the pistons and it's uh, decreasing uh, engine performance actually there isn't any evidence to suggest that and nobody's actually proven this now that's not to say that carbon isn't building up on the pistons and also uh, through the throttle body and through the uh, injectors or if you had a carburetor let's say you know that kind of thing that's not to say that's not happening but to the degree nobody really knows and also uh, we only have anecdotal evidence now a lot of people are mistaking carbon buildup from the combustion process uh, and that is the breakdown of hydrocarbons uh, hexane uh, which is uh, broken down into uh, co2 and h2o uh, but some of that isn't you never really have a hundred percent efficiency in an engine so some of that uh, is left over and that left over hits hot spots and then it uh, creates carbon uh, buildup now for an optimum engine efficiency ideally you'd want uh, polished ports you want polished uh, piston heads you want polished everything so that the airflow the fuel air mixture is allowed to flow around the cylinder evenly so that you get an even burn even combustion so that you get the most uh, efficient uh, power delivery uh, from that combustion process as soon as you have any kind of carbon buildup what essentially happens is that it disrupts the airflow within the cylinder and it reduces uh, also your volumetric efficiency. Uh, 
And what that means is, is how the combustion process occurs, how much power is delivered uh, from that combustion process. However, slight carbon buildup also assists in the combustion process. As the piston goes into the compression stroke, an extra layer of carbon on top actually uh, creates more compression power, uh, if you will, uh, on that compression stroke, or at the end of the compression stroke, so that when you get a spark, you get more compression, therefore a bigger bang for your buck once again. However, there's only a certain limit on that. If it builds up too much, then you can have uh, things uh, happening with the engine. Uh, you could also have uh, knocking. You could also have uh, pre-ignition uh, as well, where you're having different hotspots on the uh, piston head uh, and uh, all sorts of problems can occur there as well. So the question is, does this hot air from the engine that's got a bit of oil residue, does it create undue uh, carbon buildup? Well, again, there's no real evidence to suggest that it does. However, some people have taken their cylinder heads off and they said, wow, well, look at this uh, carbon buildup. But as I say, they may be mistaking that for also normal carbon buildup from ethanol fuels as well, and also uh, from the normal combustion process. Now, this doesn't mean that periodically you shouldn't put some fuel additive uh, in your tank, uh, or a couple of tankfuls, and just to run it through so that it helps to clean uh, the jets, depending on uh, engine that you have, uh, the injectors, of course, uh, and also uh, clean up the cylinders uh, and the pistons as well. In all other engines, this carbon buildup on the pistons is usually associated with uh, piston rings uh, starting to degrade. There's a bypassing oil that tends to uh, burn uh, in the combustion chamber on, on the piston head, and therefore you get that uh, carbonization or coking, as I, we would like to call it uh, back in the day. So how do you get rid of this? Well, as I say, you can try uh, with the uh, fuel additives uh, periodically, but also uh, you basically just need to strip down the, the top end of the engine and, and give everything a really good clean. That uh, means injectors, depends on the engine. Uh, that means your valves, uh, and also that means uh, your piston heads as well. Um, this is what we would do back in the day. So it's this that is nothing new, but we're not talking after 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles. You know, you might be 20,000, miles 30,000 miles and above but you can delay that inevitability by just using really decent quality fuel or if you're not sure uh, then you can use uh, fuel additives or if you're worried about this oil venting uh, back into the engine then uh, the fuel additives uh, would help with that as well my point here is this beware of false profits and beware of big claims as well because as I say there's only anecdotal evidence here if you really wanted to test this, you'd have to get two exactly the same engines, let's say 107 uh, M8 engines, uh, on exactly the same bike. And they'd have to be ridden by the same rider in the same conditions uh, for, let's say, 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles, and 20,000 miles. You'd have to have one bike that is completely stock. In other words, that the, the venting goes back into the throttle body. Then you'd have to have the other bike that has the external breather kit uh, from uh, brand new. Then you'd have to break down the engine at 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles, and 20,000 miles and see if there's a noticeable difference. But actually, even with two bikes, that isn't really going to tell you the whole story. You really, you need to do a study over 100 bikes or 100 engines or 200 engines. That's what would give you some definitive data whether there is or there isn't excessive carbon buildup from this, uh, this process. Now, on paper... It would make logical sense that actually if you take away any hot air going into the engine and any oil residue or potential oil residue going into the, uh, the combustion chamber, that's going to improve your combustion efficiency, your volumetric efficiency. So there is logic there. So how much of a performance gain? Nobody knows until you have two engines or two motorcycles and you put them on a dyno just to see what the uh, performance difference is. You have one with a stock configuration, you have one with an external breather kit, and you go through the whole RPM range and then you'll see what the performance figures for horsepower and also for torque are uh, in that range. 
Now the other thing we've got to consider is whether your mixture, your fuel air mixture in the cylinders uh, is running lean or rich and it really depends on whether you've had your motorcycle tuned in any way uh, to run lean or rich or slightly richer uh, throughout the RPM range. Now, the only way you're going to know this, of course, is if you uh, get the bike uh, on a dyno. And then ideally, you'd want two engines or two motorcycles exactly the same. One is stock configuration, uh, no modifications at all, but still with this uh, venting into the throttle body. And then you'd want uh, one uh, with, uh, with the external breather kit as well. And what you want to know if it's running leaner or if it's running richer uh, throughout the RPM range. Now, if it's running leaner and there is excessive carbon buildup uh, on the piston uh, in the cylinder, then you're going to have lots of different hot spots and cold spots, and that's just going to compound the problem. More oil residue, let's say, could be potentially going into uh, the combustion chamber, uh, and then uh, there could be uh, some uh, unburned fuel there as well, and this all adds up to hot spots and cold spots, and then the hot spots will uh, burn off or carbonize uh, any oil or any uh, fuel there as well so you're just making the situation worse but without testing you're not going to know also the electronics on the bike the o2 sensors the knock sensors etc they will actually be adjusting fine tuning the bike as you're riding along based upon the exhaust gases based upon uh, uh, you know the volumetric efficiency so on and so forth all the algorithms that they work upon they'll be sensing that and then the ESM will be making uh, changes uh, to your fuel air mixture as well the other thing you've got to consider here as well if warm air is actually going into uh, your combustion chamber, especially for starting, well, actually, that can help uh, your motorcycle. If it's just purely cold air, that can cause a problem. At this stage, you really want to consider this like a, a set of scales. You add something, you take it away, and you're constantly trying to balance something. Now, with the external breather kit, you're basically upsetting that balance that's from the factory. That's not to say that it's wrong, and that's not to say that you're doing something incorrectly. And that's also not to say that what's coming out of the factory uh, is wrong as well. It's basically that that's the way the motorcycle has been set up. And then if you change that uh, with the external breather kit, then you're going to upset uh, the balance, let's say, uh, that this stock bike is con configured to. If you do this, then there is a chance, a slight chance granted, but there is a chance that you might throw up a check engine lights as well because of this upset in the balance. Then your NOx sensors and your O2 sensors are gonna be sensing a difference uh, in there as well from the stock map, let's say, or whatever map you've uh, had uh, your bike tuned to, and then it might show uh, differences. My point here is that it might be beneficial on paper, there may be some logic to it. There may be some long-term gains over this. But actually, how much of a gain, how much of a performance gain, how much of a decrease in carbonization are you actually going to get over the lifetime of an engine? We simply don't know. There isn't any data. You kind of go by logical reason and think, yes, okay, that would work. But also other problems could exist uh, based upon that. And finally, the other thing I suppose I really want to discuss is the aesthetics of having the external breather kit on your engine. Personally, I don't like it. I think you've got extra tubes coming out below the air cleaner, and then you've got this little uh, can, this little bottle or catch can, uh, just sitting there, either below the air cleaner, which can rattle around, or some have got a longer tube uh, that they mount to the engine casing. But again, beware of this, because not all bikes uh, can have this in the same way. It really depends what exhaust you've got as well. Other people have tried to vent the tubes up over the engine and back uh, behind the seat and down uh, behind the uh, rear wheel. Other people have put some kind of oil filter uh, on the this longer tube and actually have it draped at the front of the bike. For me, I think it just looks a bit ungainly, a little bit untidy, but each their own. This is not a criticism of people who are having it on there. I just think it looks a little bit out of place. There is another thing to consider as well. If there is excessive carbonization from this uh, oil being vented back into the, uh, the combustion chamber via the throttle body, that would mean that you're gonna have a lot of oil being consumed. 
Um, I would actually hazard a guess that if it is really severe, then you're going to have to be constantly topping up your oil uh, once a month, once every couple of months. Uh, certainly not being able to go uh, in between services uh, without any oil changes or any oil topping up. The fact that this doesn't happen, the fact that it's only happening in minute proportions, I would say there's not much oil getting through there at all. But again, I don't have any evidence to back that up. It's just that uh, it would seem logical that you've got excessive oil uh, being vented back, then uh, you would have to keep on topping up the oil. That's not happening. Now, I've seen lots of pictures where people have emptied out the uh, the bottle, collecting bottle, the catch can, and it's got this all oil in there as well. But again, that's been running for a long, long time as well. You shouldn't have to empty this out once a week or once a month. It's really, you're going to be emptying out a little bit of it, just a little bit, uh, at every service interval as well. So every 5,000 miles. So if you've got more than that, then you've probably got a, a problem with the engine as well. One of the early indications of excessive carbon buildup within the combustion on the on the piston is to say this volumetric uh, inefficiency. You're actually going to start feeling a reduction in power. It's going to be slow to start. It's going to be slow to accelerate. Uh, you're going to have lots of flat spots. It's going to be rough running. Uh, you may have some knocking. You may have some uh, pre-ignition as well, pre-detonation as well. I mean, all these things are early indications that something is uh, not quite happening. If you're not having any of that, then the chances are you don't really have excessive carbon buildup. If you're not having excessive oil consumed uh, from your engine, then the chances are there's not a lot of oil being vented back into the throttle body. If none of this is happening, then the chances are you don't really need the external breather kit in the first place. If none of this is happening to such a degree that is being claimed, then the chances are your engine is just going to last as long as any other engine. If you use an external breather kit, you will be upset in the air fuel mixture. It's called a metric ratio, which is about 14.7 air to one part fuel. Now your bike is going to be constantly adjusting that a little bit according to the environmental conditions as well, according to altitude, so on and so forth. So not everybody will be experiencing the same uh, impact from this external breather uh, as others will. And in fact, it really depends where you're riding in the world and how much of an environmental impact we'll be having on your motorcycle and then also how that will affect the fuel air mixture if you have the external breather on or not. I put this external breather kit in the same kind of area as I would uh, when we're comparing different exhaust systems or different air uh, filters, air cleaners for any performance gain or percentage performance gain. Oh, you know, one is saying that this would be 0.5 of percent uh, greater than that one, so on and so forth. Most of this is academic and pseudoscientific until you can actually get a motorcycle on a dyno with different components and then you can compare and contrast. We're only really talking about 0.5 or 1% difference between the same exhaust types, let's say, and the same air cleaner uh, types. Now, there will be a difference, of course, between stock air cleaners, let's say, and heavy breathers, or between uh, a slip-on uh, exhaust muffler or a uh, all-in-one uh, system as well. There will be a difference there. And there will certainly be a difference, let's say, going from stock to your stage upgrades as well that you will get different performance uh, increase in there in terms of torque and horsepower as well. When we're talking about minor changes here, for road riding, most people will only ever ride, let's say 80% of the time, 90% of the time in low RPM figures. So adding an external breather kit may only be beneficial in certain RPM ranges uh, according to your map. It really might be better in a, in a lower RPM rather than a higher RPM, or vice versa. If you're revving a bike higher, then actually it's going to burn more efficiently. If you're revving a bike lower, then it's going to be less efficiency in terms of combustion as well. Also, if you're running a leaner mixture in low RPM as well, you might be getting uh, greater hotspots as well. So as I say, there's the scales, you add a bit, you take a bit away. Now, I actually haven't seen any non-falsifiable data that suggests an external breather kit is 
uh, of benefit to uh, you, to performance and also to decrease carbonization. And also that will uh, significantly change the fuel air mixture ratio uh, in your motorcycle. I haven't seen any data. As I say, the only way to do this is to get the uh, bikes or the engines on a dyno and to compare and contrast uh, with an external breather kit and without. If you want to test the carbonization, you need to test with and without at the 5, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 mile range. You need to be able to build up a pattern there. Also, you need to be able to do this on a whole series of bikes. Now on paper, it does seem logical that having an external breather kit uh, could uh, marginally increase your performance and could marginally decrease your carbonization over the the life of your engine but I say there hasn't actually been any evidence to support this only anecdotal evidence we don't really know how much oil is actually being pumped through the uh, throttle body and if it was excessive then you'd have to uh, be topping up your oil all, all the time we don't know uh, what the carbonization that has been found uh, on anecdotal evidence uh, would have been there anyway, just from the normal combustion process. We don't know if there's any significant uh, performance gain as well. So there's a lot of we don't knows. There's a lot of uh, unanswered questions here. And as I say, the other thing for me is just the catch can, the configuration of the catch can. I think it's just a little bit untidy. I think it's just a little bit uh, unnecessary, really. And I think this is where I would look at this. It's just a bit unnecessary. It's an academic discussion. It's a futile discussion in many ways. You know, we could, we're we not talking about 10, 20% difference in performance here. We're talking, let's say, not even a tenth of a percent uh, difference gains uh, in performance or decrease in uh, carbonization. If we were talking about, let's say, racing engines where every uh, hundredth of a second counts, then I would say yes, absolutely, because you're going to be revving that bike throughout the whole RPM range and you want the uh, cleanest air going through uh, the whole time. So, so that means that you want that combustion process, the power delivery from that combustion process to the, be the, the optimum at all, all times. And this is what racing engines do. But we're not talking about racing engines, we're talking about road engines and we're talking about road riding here because these are road riding bikes and road riding engines that have to comply with emissions laws as well is there a massive difference i don't think there is it's up to you whether you want to do it for my part i really don't see the benefit of having it it looks okay the maths is kind of logical but as i say you might also have other issues with it uh, as well uh, by incorporating it we don't know well, there you go. Uh, that's it. That's the external breather kit uh, for you, whether you should or shouldn't have it. As I said, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer here. It really depends whether you think you're going to see a benefit from it and a noticeable difference. Some people would claim absolutely there's a marked improvement, a marked difference straight away. I've yet to see that. But anyway, Let's get these bikes on a dyno. Let's compare and contrast. Let's break down these engines at 5, 10, and 20,000 miles. And let's uh, put it to the test. But until that time, I'll reserve judgment. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Check out the website, revelatealf.com. I'll catch you again. Bye now.